Cheers, howdy do, buckaroos. How the heck are you? You know, last week I didn't give any videos, did I? Well, because I didn't have any new beers, and so I just mostly did live videos. So I didn't add it much repertoire to my uh, YouTube channel, as it were. I actually only have one new one this week, but, uh, but well, I'm going to try to get some videos in regardless, even if I'm doubling up on stuff. Anyways, uh, I just picked this up. Let me show you the, the deal. It's a collaboration of Boulevard Brewing Company, collaboration with Zipline Brewing. Linking it up, Hop Dust India Pale Ale, 6.2%, 47 IBUs. Oh, let's see, what's it say here? A liberal dollop of lupulin powder, AKA Hop Dust, and a medley of our favorite varietals delivered juicy notes of pineapple. Mango and bubblegum. Toasty mop plays a restrained supporting role as hot flavors and aromas burst from the glass. Singing from center stage. So I tell you to look for pineapple, mango, and bubblegum. How about that? Oh, so I, I am out in my garage again. Uh, actually, I've, I've still got to get more decorations up. I've got more stuff to put out here. I just uh, need to get to everything. I'm thinking about having my daughter paint a, a home of the beer whisperer. <laughs> They said we could do stuff like that, so. but they frowned against the blackboard paint, so I may forego that idea <laughs> to, to, pay, to have her paint the home of the beer with her anyway. But we'll see. Right now, hey, I'm happy just to have a blank wall. <coughs> We're actually making a little progress. I just about got it. I still got a lot of crap in here, but I just I got enough, just about got enough room to put my bar. I've kind of figured out what I want to do now. Is take, I originally wanted to put it against the sidewall here. Because um, I was going to have the fridge, you know, well, the fridge is here, and I got my glass right here. But now I've decided I'm going to put the the bar actually right in front of where I'm sitting and give me some room, you know, to, to do videos behind the bar and or in front of the bar, whichever I decide to go. So that's 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 the plan. Uh, it's a work in progress, but hopefully we'll be in this place for a while. So there's not a great big hurry. So let's get to this beer. It pours very nice. So it's a nice head. Seems to stick to the glass nicely. Using this glass I haven't used in quite a while from Three Sheeps Brewing. I've never had anything from them. Why do you have the glass, Tom? Well, my wife found it at a thrift store, which is how I got most of my glasses. And I said, that what I'd use. That'd be a nice glass. Typically, I use a, a tulip for IPAs, but I thought this one would work nicely. So I take a flavors of pineapple, mango, and bubblegum, but the nose, I certainly got a lot of pineapple right away along with some tangerine notes I like I'm getting some nice spicy notes I'm not sure where that's coming from but hey maybe it's just me I'm gonna take a drink and, and so yeah I was uh I was I was gonna come out here where my wife and I were watching a movie Hitman's Bodyguard that's funny as hell movie <laughs> it is a crack man, yeah, man. Anyway, so I was going to come out of the garage. It was still a little warm. I turned my fan on. And it had been storming here. Uh, uh, storm, it was a big storm. Big, 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 big storm. Uh, so, uh, but it kind of dissipated. We still got a light sprinkle going on out there. But well, I'm going to open my garage door. I've been trying not to do that because, like, like I said, I still got a lot of shit in here. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, but yeah, I opened that garage door and got a nice breeze going on. So, anyway, let's get to the beer. Huh? Oh, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't eat a steady diet of mango. I'm just going to assume that flavor I'm getting, that's not anything else is mango. <laughs> you might feel other tropical fruits in there, too. You might feel uh, passion fruit in there. Again, you might feel some grapefruit. Uh, again, I still feel like I'm getting some more or tangerine to be more precise. Yeah, right at the end though, I really feel like I get a, a great big burst of grapefruit though. I mean, you feel the pineapple for sure, but it feels like this nice big, big grapefruit zest burst right there. It's, it's a nice, easy drinking IPA, because that's what they call it. You know, everything's kind of muddled these days, right? You know, uh, traditional IPAs uh, became uh, very Americanized. Of course, we have the APA, which was a different version of, of the pale ale. And now, you know, 
if I was to categorize this, I would categorize it as an AIPA, an American Indian Pale Ale, because it's really not quite, excuse me, I'll scratch my ear, it's not quite APA either, but it's really not statistically an IPA. If, if we're looking at just statistically, again, 6'2", 6'2 certainly is in line statistically with an IPA. The 47 is more in line, 47 IBUs is really more in line with an APA. So we've got an IPA, uh, ABV, but we have APA, IBUs, I'm going to call it an AIPA. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter what anybody calls anything anymore. Well, what we're, we're calling beer is about 6.5% with 15 IBUs and IPA these days, so... Just because they're cloudy. Hey, it's cloudy. It's an IPA, Tom. It's an IPA. It's got 20 IBUs, but it's an IPA, Tom. It's an IPA because it's cloudy. <laughs> it's like that old uh, Kevin Pollack bit. Uh, Kevin Pollack has uh, uh, Christopher Walken being interviewed. I can't do Christopher Walken, but the, 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 the interview was uh, Kevin Pollack explains that uh, the Christopher Walken's answers have nothing to do with the question. So the interviewer asked the question, what about this movie? Frankenstein never scared me. What about this? Marsupials do, because they're fast. That's kind of how I feel about IPAs these days. I mean, everything's just so great. Everything can be an IPA. You can call anything you want an IPA if it's just a little different than the one before. <laughs> And I'm not hating on the hazy IPAs. I just don't really feel the IPAs, but I'm not hating on them. <laughs> I mean, statistically, they're more in line. Some of them are more in line with an APA. Some of them are, you know, again, sort of like these numbers, but even more destroyed. Like I said, I mean, I, I think I had one that was like 6.5%, 12 IBUs. I mean, how in the hell is that an IPA? I'm not going to mention any names, but... Uh, Wait, wait, wait. Let's just focus on this. Focus on this one, shall you, Tom? Uh, Bovar's really been knocking it out of the park lately, in my opinion. They're really doing some great stuff out there. This, this is freaking fantastic. It is, a, it, it, it's a perfect summer IPA. Yeah, I'll be real honest with you. As the weather gets cooler. As we start heading into October, I like an IPA with a little more meat on its bones. You know, maybe not necessarily a traditional British, but something a little closer to. I like a, I like like the malts, but I like the ABV more to be more American. It's six and a half, sixty, sixty-five, with a little more meat, have a, a deeper copper, uh, you know, more traditional looking IPA in the fall. But right now, IPAs like this are brilliant. Well, because they are. I mean, they're, they're refreshing. They feel. They, they pour like summer. They look like summer. They taste like summer. That's why they're brilliant. I'm out here cranking my uh, <laughs> cranking my Spotify. I'm still trying to get used to Spotify. I really am. I'm struggling a little bit, in all honesty, but I'm trying to figure it out. I, I just you know, I just haven't figured out how it gives me some of the songs today, but hey, but it's giving me a different mix than I was listening to on my Pandora, so we're, we're going with I shaved my head in uh, April, because I do about every April for, you know, St. Baldrick's, uh, uh, I, I do the, you know, for Seamus, my son, when he had leukemia, I always shaved it, so uh, I just kind of typically do, but I haven't cut it. Since I shaved it, and, uh, uh, and uh, about the, well, actually, it was a very, uh, that was beginning of April when I shaved it. So now I'm, you know, two and a half months later, I, you know, I haven't cut it again or even trimmed it. So now I've kind of got a joke I need to have. I have my, my daughter's been coloring her and her kids' hair. I'll, uh, I never put a streak in my hair because I'm getting that, uh, you know, that. That 70s David Bowie thing going on. It's hard to tell here, but in the mirror, you can really see it's kind of sticking up here. And it's a little bit longer back here. It's not quite mullet. <laughs> That's usually why I trim up the back, because it tends to look like a mullet if I don't keep cutting the back until this all evens out with it. So anyway, I get that, that, that 70s David Bowie thing going on, man. Uh, 
Oh, mercy. This is a very good beer, though. It really is. It's not. And the best part, well, I mean, it was $7.99 a six-pack. Anytime you can get a good craft beer for 8 bucks a six-pack, hey, they, they, that same store had that new, you know, <laughs> George Washington recipe Budweiser, you know. Well, they like to play with patriotism, don't they? From, from a Dutch-owned company, no less. But anyway, we'll put a pin in that. <laughs> No, but that beer was eight nine nine a six pack. I'm thinking, why would anybody buy a faux craft beer like that for nine bucks a six pack when you can get a real craft beer for seven ninety nine? And even a lot of, you know, I mean, I mean, hell, regular buds like seven ninety nine a six pack in a lot of markets. And hell, why would you buy that shit when you can get a real beer, man? I don't know why anybody's drinking that candy ass shit. To be honest with you. <laughs> You know, if you're talking about price, say, okay, I like this because it's, you know, I can get a bar. Okay, I'll, you know, hey, you want to get drunk cheap? I don't care. But why would you pay the same price for a cheap beer as you could a really good one? It's like looking at a package of round steak and a ribeye for the exact same price and still picking up the fucking round steak. <laughs> There's something wrong with you. If you're still going to pick up a round steak and a ribeye is the exact same price, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> well, that's just how I feel about it. Oh, it's, this is nice. And bubble gum, sure. I mean, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah maybe. First, I think they're reaching for the bubble gum, but what the hell, I'm going to give it to them. Why not? <laughs> it's more like biting in a juicy fruit than bubble gum, but what the hell? <laughs> Descriptions have gotten out of hand, in my opinion. It tastes notes of this and notes of this. You know they're just pulling this shit out your ass, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Some brewer says, oh, I taste this, don't you? And everybody around is going, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That pretentious circle that grab beer, you know. When somebody says something, now you can't. Do, no, no, oh yeah. Oh, not only do I get this, but I get this other obscure flavor. Oh yeah, you're right. That's in there. <laughs> it's got that hair. Whatever happened, just popping a beer, enjoying a damn thing. Can't we just enjoy the freaking beer, man? Why? Why can't we just enjoy the mother freaking beer? Why can't we not just do that, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm just enjoying the mother frickin' beer. I am trying to be whisper. Beer fabulous for living beer drinker. Per beer wisdom, man. Hey, cheese whiz, whatever flavor is tonight, beer's frickin' brilliant. For the bottle one time, as I say. All around, good guy, and cheers.